and uh, they'll watch it afterwards. So I'm gonna get started. We're gonna talk about ten places, ten piers to fish. These places are uh, really good to take the family, take the kids, and you can catch a variety of species out there. I'm only gonna tell y'all about the good spots, none of the bad spots. And so we're gonna start in a place where I'm uh, most familiar with, which is the uh, Lake Pontchartrain Seawall. This is where I started fishing. This is where I, I became addicted to uh, catching specks and reds. And it's definitely possible still to catch specks and reds from the seawall in Lake Pontchartrain. Um, let's see, I got some notes written. But this whole area along Lakeshore Drive, I know most of y'all probably already know about this area. It's all good fishing, especially at the mouths of these canals where they dump out into the lake. There's always some bait movement. There's always something feeding right there. But uh, I guess we're going to break it down by season. Uh, right now, we're going into the winter. It's probably the worst time to fish out there. But if you can catch a good day where we don't have a real north, hard north wind, you can probably catch a few drum or maybe a few redfish uh, along the seawall, especially if you concentrate on the, the mouths of the canals, like down at the Seabrook Pier, which isn't what it used to be, but there's still fish that are caught there all the time. Lots of reds, lots of drum. But if you concentrate on the mouths of these canals down here, the, the London Avenue Canal behind UNO, uh, the mouth of Bike St. John, it's kind of shallow right there. I, I haven't had too much success there. But also this Orleans Avenue Canal is where they catch a lot of redfish, especially in the summertime. There's a lots of reds that are caught here. And that's primarily what you're going to catch is reds on the seawall nowadays. But in the once you get, all right, so in the winter, you probably catch mostly reds. In the summer, you'll catch mostly reds. But once you get to the fall and the spring, you're going to fish these mouths. You're going to be able to catch speckled trout that are migrating in and out of the lake. So in the fall, you want to just, you know, focus on jigging plastic. So a live shrimp would probably be your best option. You can throw some live shrimp, like, off of these front sides of the London Avenue Canal. You'll probably catch a few specks, a few reds, a nice mixed bag of fish, you know, early in the morning, late in the afternoon. And the rigs you want to use, you don't want to use any corks out here on the seawall. Corks are pretty much useless. The water is deeper than uh, seven or eight feet. I usually don't pop a cork. And out there on the seawall, it varies, you know, seven to 10 to 12 feet in certain areas. And it's slightly deeper where the canals are, so that's why it attracts fish. Um, let's see. Let's keep moving then. The point is also another little spot. This is kind of like a pier. More like a pier than the seawall. You drive out here. You see where the cars are parked. You just back in. And let's see what the comments are saying. You just back in there and you just fish off there on the bottom. People catch a lot of sheephead along these rocks. A lot of um, drum and reds like uh, along the seawall. You're not that far away. But that's always a good spot. To fish. Also, in the summertime, you can catch uh, the crazy uh, Jack Creval run sometime if you get lucky. And you can also catch jacks all along the seawall in the summertime. You just got to keep an eye open for the bait and uh, get lucky and catch them. I guess we're going to stay close. We got two more piers, like in the New Orleans metro area, which is at Williams Boulevard and at the Bonneville Boat Launch. Both of these boat launches have piers at them. I don't have much success at them. I did see a report when I was doing my research for this. Uh, April 2014, uh, Ty Hibbs went out there and smashed some trout on the lights, under the lights out there. But I don't know how common that experience is. So maybe in the spring you can catch specks there. Uh, this, this place is lighted and open 24 hours a day. So if you want to try some night fishing, it's probably a good spot to go. And I'm, I'm pretty sure Williams is the same way. You'll probably catch a lot of redfish and drum and freshwater cats out here. It's a little bit fresher on this side of the lake. And I'm pretty sure it's lighted. I haven't I haven't done much fishing out here. My only experience is that out here is like like way before Katrina. I was out here throwing a cast net, or I was out here watching a guy throw a cast net and he put it up on top of a big like six foot snake. And that's my only experience fishing at Williams. <laughs> Let's see what the comments are saying. Anybody chat in the comments? All right, and I'm gonna go and put like uh, directions to all these places in the description. 
so you guys can find the launches, the uh, the piers. I guess we're gonna move up a little bit to the east. We're gonna go to the St. Tammany Pier. This place could be so much better than it is right now. Right now, it's only open uh, Thursday through Friday. Well, actually, right now it's not open at all, but it's only open spring through December, the first week of December, Thursday through Friday. So you got very limited options to fish there. It cost, uh, what was it? It cost $3 a person, I believe, to fish out there. But it is in a really cool location. And if they were ever open like the rest of the twin span up to fish, it would be really cool, a really cool pier to fish. But I've seen a lot of good reports this fall coming out of it where people are catching reds and a few specks on the live shrimp. And you can also crab off of this pier, which is pretty cool. Um, you can't use um, can't use traps, but you can use uh, crab nets off the pier. And I did see a lot of good reports of people catching a lot of crabs. Probably in the summer months, you know, when it's warm outside, you you can catch some good crabs out there. But this is also a really cool place to take your kids. It's real safe, and they have restrooms and facilities there. But it's just a shame that it's not open. Like right now, it's December. It's kind of a really good time to fish out here in the lake, and it's not even open. It's closed for the for the winter. So maybe you, if you live in St. Tammany, call your uh, call your government and tell them that they should do more with the pier and let people fish. But yeah, you know you're gonna catch a lot of specks in the fall, in the springtime. I fished in the kayak on this pier and used the structure and. Uh, I've definitely caught fish at this pier, not on top of the pier, but at the pier. So yeah, get out there when it's open. All right, we're gonna move a little further west now. Let's see if I can do this a fast way. No, that's not the point, it's the sunset. Ah uh, man, uh, and when they got fish all over Lake Pontchartrain, you just gotta get out there at the right times. Now this is for my North Shore people again. We're gonna go over to the uh, the Sunset Pier. I've never fished out here, but it looks pretty nice when I looked it up on the website. It's free. It's open 24 hours a day. It's lighted, and I'm sure they got lots of drum. Uh, I saw some good reports of drum and redfish being caught in the springtime. So I'm sure in the fall it's the same way. I don't know if it's legal to fish off these rocks, but man, I would try off these rocks. In the fall, we catch a lot of speckled trout in the, on the shorelines in the fall. But let's talk about the pier. What else we know about this pier? I would always, you know, as in everywhere else in the lake, I would use a bottom rig. No more than a one ounce sinker is all you're going to need to hit the bottom in Lake Pontchartrain. And you want to tie like a, a drop shot with a piece of market bait or a live shrimp or a piece of cut mullet even would, would catch you some fish out there, probably black drum and, and red fish. But this is also, I've never fished out here. I want to try out here, though, man. I've I, I just been too lazy to drive over there. But let's keep it moving. Sunset Pier is a cool place, 24 hours open. Let's move on to a newer pier, another spot I haven't fished yet. But it looks like it's in a cool area. It looks like you can do some good crabbing. We're going to move down to the Delacroix area, which is in St. Bernard Parish, if you're not familiar. And don't worry, I'm going to put the directions in the description so you can find all these places. This place is brand new. Let's see, i got to move up in time to find it to the present day. All right, here we go. Present day, you can see they put in a nice big parking area. And uh, this is the pier right here. Let's see if it's on ground in Street View. Nope, nothing was there when they took the Street View pictures. But all right, but it's kind of a smaller area. It's not very big, but it seems like it would be good right now in the winter time when the fish are on the inside. You probably have the potential to catch specks, um, reds, drum, pretty much a little bit of everything in coastal Louisiana. You can see where you're at. You're really close to all the good areas where people boat fish and redfish. This is a really good red fishing area here. So I'm sure they have redfish under this pier. I've never fished it yet, but yeah, you can catch redfish, drum, um, freshwater cats would probably be available there. If you fish on the bottom with market bait, live shrimp, I'm sure you'll be able to catch fish here. A popping cork might also be viable here if you could cast across. I don't know how far that is. But if you work live shrimp under a popping cork, maybe you'll be able to catch trout in the fall and the springtime when they're on the inside in the marsh. 
But yeah, this place looks pretty promising. Also, probably lots of good crab in here if you like the crab. Um, you know, chicken necks on a string, you probably clean up right there at certain times of the year. But I know when it gets real cold in the winter, there's definitely going to be some reds in this canal. They're going to be stacked up in that canal. So, all right, let's see. Where are we moving to next? We're going to move a little further east now. We're going to go check out another pier that's kind of on the edge of the freshwater. Oh, no, there's not. This is somewhere else. Myrtle Grove. I just included this because uh, it's wintertime. This is an area where you can fish right off the back of your car. You pull up to the marina. You got to pay to fish here. I think it's like five bucks, five or seven, but I'm not really sure what it is. I have never done it in a while. I think last time I did it, it was five per, five dollars per person or per vehicle. Just go there and ask them how, how much it is to fish off the bank there. But when it gets real cold in the winter, when we get those hard cold fronts, 30 degrees, um, and the wind is all blowing 30 miles out from the north, you can fish right here in Myrtle Grove. Right off the bank here, you're going to cast out on the bottom with market bait, dead shrimp on the bottom, and you're going to catch a limit of reds, guaranteed. But you just got to pay attention to when it gets cold. And uh, you, you'll you definitely catch some fish. It gets crowded now in the winter, so if you do, we do get one of those cold snaps. You want to get out there early, get your spot, get in and out, or maybe just go late after everybody's left. But, you know, get in there when it's cold, you'll catch some reds. That's a sneaky little spot. I went out there in the kayak this past winter when it was real cold. I caught probably 30 redfish in like a 30-minute span. It was it was ridiculous. Don't go into any of these areas over here. This is all private areas, and you will get a ticket. They're pretty strict about it when the winter comes around because it gets crowded and people try to skirt the rules. But you want to just fish on this front side here where the old ramp was and cast out into this area. And as far as you can, you're going to catch redfish. All right, let's keep it moving. That's a simple area. I'm going to go to another 24-hour pier. Another one that I've, I've done a little fishing off of here, but this is down in Lafitte, Louisiana. Got to come all the way down the road next to the fire station down here. Pretty sure that's what it is, a fire station. It's a 24-hour pier. It's free to anybody. I think they have some restrooms and stuff, so it's a good spot to bring the family. It's handicap accessible and everything. And I believe it's lighted, too. I don't quote me on that though. I'm not sure if the lights work, but you can fish into the main canal right here and uh, you're definitely going to catch drum, freshwater catfish, redfish on on market bait on the bottom. Also, you're going to catch a lot of crabs um, right here too. So if you like crab, and this is the place to go. It's not much, cur um, the current moves through here, but it's not super fast. So you only need like a one ounce sinker. Maybe two ounce max. You just want to make a long cast out to the middle and wait and see what's going to bite. I've never really f had much success here, but I, I know of people who do fish here often and, and do pretty well catching reds and drum. I fished like back along this shoreline in the spring. I know they got reds there because I fished this shoreline in the spring and I saw. Oh, my, my map is falling down. I saw probably 100, 150 reds along this stretch. So it's definitely a red fishy area right along this stretch here. So it's not that far. What is that? 100 yards? It's not a far distance for this fish to swim and bite your hook. So yeah, that's down in Lafitte. Another good free pier. Now we're going to move down to where like I like to go, but I don't like to drive to. It's a little bit further away from the city. But we're going to get into some really good fishing. This is a spot where you can really go and clean up down at the Leeville Pier here. This is another real new one. I don't know if everybody knows where this one is at. It's down on the way down to Grand Isle. You don't get up on the elevated bridge. You pass it up and go down to Old Highway 1. And you come down to the Leeville Pier. Look, it's not even in the picture here. Let's see. Yeah, this one's so new they don't even have it in the picture on Google Earth. And this is from 2015. So I think it's maybe like a year and a half, two years old now. But it's right here. It extends out into this little area. And you can pat, you can cast out into, I guess this is, what is this? The Southwest Canal. It's right off of Bayou Lafouche. It's really good fishing. Cast out here. There's lots of bull reds, redfish, sheephead, 
speckled trout, white trout, crocus, a little bit of every, you know, everything you want to catch is right here at the Leeville Pier. It's uh, it's open 24 hours. It's lighted, and that's probably one of the better times for fish is at night in the lights. You can go out there with your little crappie rigs, your little sabikis, and catch hundreds, thousands of white trout every night when it's warm. Um, in the spring and the fall, I, I I did really well there. I'm sure you could probably go out there right now at night and catch something, some white trout as well. But year round, this is going to be a really good producer. You're going to be able to catch something when you go out there. You can fish on the cork at night. You can fish um, just small little jigs and catch speckled trout and white trout all night long. Um, in the daytime, you want to probably primarily work the bottom, fishing, uh, you know, live baits, live cockahoe minnows, live shrimp, cut baits, market bait, you know, a little bit of everything. You're going to catch a little bit of everything. Sharks. Big bull reds, big bull drum, a little bit of everything is going to be down there. This is a really good area. Now, if you wanted to drive a little further, man, this is not going to make it through the rest of this video. I only got a couple more spots to highlight. You want to drive a little further down the road, we're going to go down here, down to Fushan. We're going to fly down. Let's see. Yeah, Charles, I talked about the Bonneville Pier already. You missed it. It wasn't that interesting anyway. All right, let's go back. We are we're down to Fushan now. This is the Fushan Public Boat Launch. This is a really cool spot. It's kind of under you last. This is lighted and open 24 hours right along this whole boardwalk here. Caught some nice specks and uh and reds along here. And uh, you all usually get a dolphin show too when you're out here. The dolphins like to come through this main channel and stir up everything. But this place is really nice. They have showers, they have bathrooms. Really, I could live down there if I really wanted to <laughs> in the summertime. But yeah, this is a, a underutilized spot. I don't see many people fishing here often. But yeah, you know, you know, fish it the same way you fish everywhere else. But maybe you also want to incorporate a popping cork here because the speckled trout will get on top and eat under the cork. But also, you can throw it on the bottom and catch bull reds and sheephead and. A little bit of everything down here because you're pretty much at the Gulf of Mexico. The beach is right here. Fish don't have a long, far way to go. It's nice and salty and and uh, really good fishing right here. Let's see what the comments. What's everybody talking about in the comments? Do I check the tide? No, I never check the tide because I know the water is going to be moving one way or another. And if I'm going fishing, I'm going fishing anyway. That's the answer to my tide question. I check the weather, but I never check the tide. The wind, the rain forecast is more important to me than the tide because you got to make the fish bite anyway, no matter what the tide is doing. But yeah, Fushon. I call that the Fushon Pier, but uh, I think that's really just called the Fushon Public Boat Launch. All right, now we're going to just move over because the thing is about to... No, that's Leeville. Where are we going? We're going a little further east now. We're going all the way to Grand Isle. Down to the island. There's the pier on this side before you get to the island. This one is not as good as the one on the other side, but I have caught bull reds, sharks, a little bit of everything off of this side. There's also lights, but it doesn't extend as far. There's also lights where white trout get into, but it doesn't extend as far out into the channel anymore because the sandbar is built up here. So it's really shallow on the first you know, from here all the way out to here is really shallow. And then the deep water access is not very, not very far. So it can get crowded on the end of this one. But this one even gets even more crowded. On this side, the bridge side pier, I do a lot of night fishing in the summertime when I'm down in Grand Isle. There's lights all the way down. You can fish, you know, like your little small crappy rigs like I was talking before, crappy jigs, sabiki rigs, and uh, just little small shrimp imitations right on the surface will catch you a lot of specks a lot of and even more white trout like that's probably the number one fish caught off this pier is white trout you also don't want to forget about fishing the bottom though uh, fish the bottom you're going to catch a little bit of variety of everything redfish flounders everything is out here you're pretty much in the gulf right here this is probably my favorite pier to fish in louisiana but i fish it primarily at night i've never fished it in the daytime i usually go kayak fishing in the daytime fish the pier at night but hope 
it says help somebody illuminate them a place where they can take the kids take the family and go take them catch some real fish yeah i didn't even talk about stingrays on here that's right deputy i always forget about stingrays i don't fish with market bait that much anymore so i don't catch that many stingrays that's probably my primary reason for not fishing with bait i do catch a lot of catfish though all right the last place i'm going to talk about man this is getting long I should have brought a drink. My mouth is getting dry. We're going to talk about Point of Shin. Point of Shin is a really cool area. There's a lot of little bank fishing areas out there. It's about an hour and 20 minute drive from New Orleans. But down here at the boat ramp, you can pay to fish. And he's got this little pier here set up. You can fish into this main canal. I just made a video down there. There's lots of specks and redfish down in Point of Shin. If you took that video out, I wasn't very far from this pier when I caught the trout. But you go here in the marina, you pay five bucks per vehicle to fish. It's just not that bad. It's a nice, well-maintained area where you can walk on this pier and fish. And also, you don't want to neglect these rocks on this side. But I'm talking about the piers right now. So Maybe next week I'll talk about some more adventurous spots to bank fish that are off the beaten path. But, yeah, you can catch a lot of fish here. Drum, sheephead, redfish. Throw a cast net and catch shrimp in the fall when they're really moving through. Um, lots of crabs are caught down here too, so keep that in mind if you like the crab. Uh, but you know, bottom rigs are going to be the best here. That current through this channel right here really pumps through here. So you're going to probably want to use a heavier weight. One and a half ounces, two ounces is probably going to be best in this channel. Because if the tide really moves through and there's lots of oysters and uh, snags and hang-ups. So you want to really have a heavy weight that's going to hit the bottom and hold and not sweep through on the bottom and get snagged. Because you're going to go through a ton of tackle. But yeah, market bait on the bottom, live shrimp, you know, the regulars. I've talked about it. That's probably about it on the point of shin pier. Probably your best times to fish, though, let me tell you that. The best times that you want to fish are... Um, spring through, well, fall through spring. So you want to start fishing probably in about um, September, maybe late September, and you want to fish it through the winter into uh, January, February, March, or March or April, and then it's probably going to tail off a little bit. You're still going to be able to catch uh, reds and reds and drum in the summer, but it's going to be a lot less speckled trout. Once you get to those warmer summer months, they're going to move out into the more coastal areas. Let's see. We have any questions? Anybody still here? I was just rambling. What? Did it shut down? Anybody still here want to ask a question? Wintertime trout fishing tips next week? All right. That probably would be more useful. I just wanted to talk about something this week just to try it out. See who would show up. So. I'm glad you guys came. Anybody have any questions, suggestions, tips? St. Tammany Pier is closed right now, Deputy. It's a shame. This is the best time of the year to fish the lake, and they closed it down on December 2nd. They won't open it back up till the springtime, they said. There's no date, but they said the spring. So the trial will still be in once they reopen it. Thanks for watching, Charles. I don't know how. Far behind I am one. What hooks do I use? I like to use a, a kale hook, K-A-H-L-E, like probably a number one. Or I will use um an Eagle Claw number one J hook with the bait holder on it. So it's got barbs down the shank and it's and it's uh, not a very big hook. It's a, a pretty small hook. Trout tips next week. Alright, I guess we won. That's two votes for trout. So I guess we'll uh, talk about trout. I had a nice little trout trip yesterday. I went down to Hopedale, and uh, we didn't fish very far from the launch in the kayaks, and we were able to, I think I ended up with 12 trout and four reds. I was throwing back trout, though. I didn't have a ruler with me, and all those trout were kind of small, and I was thinking they were undersized. So I probably threw back, at, like, another 10 trout. Uh, the map is falling down, so I think I got to shut this down now. Cody, I don't know where Cody's fishing at. If Cody don't want to tell you, I'm not going to tell you. All right, the map is falling. I'm about to shut this down. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next Wednesday, same time. 
And uh, we'll talk about some trout. Look, the map is falling down. So look at this. I gotta get some real tape next week. All right, stop. Damn. 